if you're going to lift restrictions on Iran's nuclear programs, you should do it by conditioning the lifting of these restrictions on a change of Iranian behavior and not on a date certain on the calendar. And that was essentially the difference. And they haven't changed the behavior? No. Well, that was Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu with me just a few months ago on the glaring difference between what the Prime Minister sought in the Iran deal and what President Obama allowed. You know, with Tehran still supporting terrorism, it is the number one, the very top of the State Department's list of state sponsors of terrorism, not to mention its continuing ballistic missile program, the U.N., saying that they've already cheated twice on the deal. How will President-elect Trump change or modify the agreement? John Bolton joins us now, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, a Fox News contributor whose name has been mentioned as a possible Secretary of State. Ambassador, what do you think President-elect Trump will do about the nuclear deal? Well, I've said consistently, I think this deal is a strategic disaster for the United States. I think the sooner we get out of it, the better. Uh, I think in the opening days of the administration, uh, he should make that clear. Uh, and I reject this argument that somehow we should try to hold the uh, Ayatollahs to the strict terms of the deal and let them uh, try to withdraw from it. N number one, this deal is going to crater at some point, and the notion that we allow them to determine when they withdraw from it to put our interest in their hands in terms of timing, I think is a mistake. And let's also be clear, even if we withdraw from it, uh, whether they withdraw from it or whether we withdraw from it, they're going to blame us anyway. It's just not possible to allow them to continue to take advantage of the deal to get more trade and investment deals with the Europeans. That, that's, that's one of the critical mistakes in the deal itself, to enmesh the Europeans, particularly in these economic arrangements, uh, that make it harder and harder for them to do the right thing. So I think we should not be ambiguous with our allies. I think we should say this deal is a mistake. The Iranians have been violating it anyway. We need to get out of it. Well, what about the supporters who say it uh, could prevent a nuclear war, that it has delayed or prevented Iran from obtaining a nuclear bomb? Uh, Charles Schumer, Senator Schumer, says give it a year or two. No, no, you can't give it a year or two. They, they are on, the Iranians are on a path to nuclear weapons uh, right now. Uh, and the idea that uh, somehow watching their behavior uh, is going to make things better isn't going to work. The, the trouble with this deal, uh, there are many troubles with this deal, but it's not only a mistake strategically, it's very badly negotiated, very poorly drafted from the American point of view. So let's take the example that the International Atomic Energy Agency has just given of this second uh, violation of the deal by Iran in terms of the amount of heavy water that it has, heavy water uh, uh, critical in the production of plutonium that can be used for nuclear weapons. Looks like it's limited in the deal to 130 tons at any given time, but in fact the words of the deal are consistent with Iran's requirements. We estimate that they need 130 tons. That's like trying to nail jello to a wall. You can't hold them to those terms. And look at, look at what the Obama administration did the first time uh, they exceeded 130 tons. The United States of America purchased the excess from Iran. So not only do we pay for hostages, not only do we unfreeze $150 billion, we get Iran out of the uh, violation territory they've put themselves in and further subsidize their nuclear program. It's just unbelievable. And finally, Ambassador, what about the issue of behavior? I mean, they were given a free pass. Uh, Mr. Netanyahu was very clear on that, that, you know, they got the missiles and they're supporting terrorism, and that's not at all part of the deal. Yeah, look, the, the premise of the deal was not only that it would solve the nuclear program, but it was grounded in the notion that by demonstrating to Tehran that the United States had no hostile intent, Iran's behavior would change for the better. It has done exactly the opposite. Iran is more provocative now, more destabilizing, more of a troublemaker in the region. And just think, if you don't like Iran's behavior today, what will it be like when they get deliverable nuclear weapons? The, the, what we need to do is stop them, not facilitate them, which is what this deal does. And they've received hundreds of billions of dollars. Ambassador John Bolton, as we wait a potential Secretary of State announcement, I know one thing. You could be getting a birthday present. It's your birthday today. Or, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm sure the North Koreans are happy, too. <laughs> I know. They've, the North Koreans, by the way, folks, that's a reference to they've, they've called you a very ugly fellow. Uh, and uh, some other things I won't say. So we'll see what happens, and I'm sure potentially we'll be dealing with them again. I know Kim Jong-un would be really happy to see you. Indeed. <laughs> Ambassador John Bolton.